Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really well today. Welcome to a brand new video on how to change strings. Just yesterday, I had a Skype student tell me how he's never changed strings before and during quarantine in his country, he doesn't have anyone around him who can change the strings for him. So today, I will show you my tips and tricks on how to change strings, when you know you're ready to change strings, as well as what kind of strings I personally like to use and what you can do with your used strings when you don't need them anymore. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And just a spoiler alert, changing your strings is not rocket science. So let's get into it. So the items that you'll need today are some strings, of course, some peg wax. I like to also have a pair of tweezers close by, as well as a really, really sharp pencil, a tissue paper, a pen. And this is optional, but I like to also have the finest steel wool that I could find close by. Let me show you how to use it. First things first, you want to unscrew the old strings on your violin. I recommend not to change all four strings at once. Your violin is constructed for pressure distributed over four strings, not just three. So be sure to change your strings immediately after you take an old string off. Next up, prep the violin. To be thorough, clean the peg with a tissue paper and redistribute peg wax on your peg. You particularly need peg wax to smoothly tune your strings with the pegs. I only have a fine tuner on the E string, but have made it a habit to put peg wax on all of my strings with every string change. I'm also someone who really likes to put a lot of peg wax on there. It's just something I've been doing over the years, but I know plenty of people who only put a little bit of peg wax on there and that's totally fine. Now for the second step to prep your violin, this is where the steel wool is coming into play. I only know one other person who does this step, but I find it immensely helpful. It is super important that you use the absolute finest steel wool available out there. So why do I use this steel wool and how do I use it? The fingerboard on the violin can get very very dirty from the sweat from our fingers working so hard. <laughs> You might not necessarily see it, but maybe you can feel it when shifting gets kind of sticky and unsmooth. That's because there's sweat and gunk on your fingerboard that just accumulates over time. Use your super fine steel wool to briefly run it up and down the ebony section of your violin. That's the fingerboard and it's the black wood section. Now here's the thing, be very very careful not to rub it excessively and not to let it touch the strings nor the brown wood parts. It should only clean the ebony since that is a part that can be replaced. You see, the brown wood parts are part of the violin. You don't want to alter them or wear them down in that sense. However, the black parts are not the original part of the violin. The fingerboard part gets replaced by luthiers after years of usage. Washing your hands before touching your violin is a great way to minimize your fingerboard from getting too dirty. I've linked the steel wool in the description down below. By the way, all items that I mention are going to be linked down below, so please be sure to check it out. To further prep our violin for the new string, use your sharp pencil to mark the part where the string touches the bridge and the ebony. This will optimize and lessen friction for your string when you tune it daily, extending its life. Once you have your old string off, check what kind of string your tailpiece is made for. If your tailpiece has a hook, like its designated E string part of my violin, then you will need a string without a ball at the end of it. If your violin, however, has a hole where the designated A, D and G string parts of my violin, then you will need a ball ended string. Most commercial strings come with a ball end because then you have the option to either use it with the ball end or you can manually remove the ball end yourself. If your tailpiece has a hook but your string is ball ended, take the pen to take it out like this. Press the ball onto the table with the tip of the pen and pull the string tight at a 75 degree angle. I find this the easiest way to take the ball out. Before we actually put the string on, let's talk about strings. I've been using the commercially available Peter Infeld strings for years now, as well as a prototype string that I don't think is out on the market. Some strings have specific characteristics onto them. Do you like a very bright violin sound or do you like an almost viola-like, very deep sound? There are so many different kinds. Deciding on a string really depends on your sound preferences. Strings can sound very different on each instrument. It is important to try out different strings so you find the best match for your instrument. Now onto when do we change the strings. There are obvious signs such as a shredded string or if you lightly run your finger or nail along the string, 
it can feel broken in some spots. That probably means your instrument needs an update in the string department. But even if your string doesn't feel broken, if your violin is starting to sound dull, changing your strings could really make a difference as well. There are different factors that can make your string sound dull sooner or later. For example, if you professionally practice for four to five hours per day, you might need to replace your string after a month already. But if you play the violin for maybe one hour a day for fun, you might only need to change your strings every five months or so. There's also the factor of repertoire that you're playing. For example, when I was practicing the Prokofiev Violin Concerto Number no. 2, I was really shredding the violin at some spots and um, that really aged my strings, let's say. So if you're playing some Mozart, some Bach or, you know, Suzuki, then the shelf life of your strings might last longer. And now there's a last factor in my experience, which is concerts or competitions. Of course, you want to have the best possible setup on your violin for those events. So that could be another reason for you to change your strings. Now let's get back into the tutorial and finally get those strings on. Insert your peg at the top and thread your string into the peg hole. Turn your peg so that the string lays on top of the peg. From a side view, the A and E string pegs should turn clockwise. For the D and G string pegs, turn them counterclockwise. Setting your string up properly on the peg is probably the trickiest part, simply because the peg box is so small and nifty that it's hard to get your fingers in there. This is why I like to carefully use a tweezer. I pull the string out with the tweezers and keep screwing the peg around the little excess 1 to 2 cm that I just pulled out with the tweezer. This way your string can't just easily unravel and it looks nice and neat without the string end sticking out of the peg box. Insert your ball or hook your string into the tailpiece. When turning the string tighter, make sure that your strings align into the marked spots on the bridge and the ebony. Tune your violin and we're almost done. This last step is optional, but I like to do it because I have terrible memory and I like to be organized. So I actually write down the date when I've changed each string. All too often we forget when we've changed our strings last and this just helps us keep track of it. And now what to do with our old strings. If your strings aren't completely shredded up, I suggest you save them up until you have a few and donate them instead of throwing them away. I usually give mine to my former violin teacher of 10 years who has access to a string collection box for donations, but I've listed a few organizations in the description down below for you as well, so you can check them out and send your strings there. For example, there's the organization called The Open String, which has their Strings for Change program. They send their strings to third world countries as well as underfunded music programs and youth orchestras in the United States. Then there's this nonprofit based in LA called the String Bank. And what these organizations do is to collect the strings, clean them, sort them, and then distribute them to El Sistema like programs or underfunded youth orchestras and schools. If you know of more organizations that do something like this, please share it down in the comment section. Because strings are kind of hard to tell apart, particularly violin strings, I like to actually sort each string type separately and label them out of consideration. Now that we're at the end of this video, I do want to announce a little giveaway. I'm gifting one set of Peter Infeld strings for you to try out. All that you have to do to participate is to give this video a thumbs up, follow my YouTube and comment down below what made you happy today. Especially during the pandemic, let's try to count our blessings and make the best of this. Please be sure to check out the description down below for the items that I've been talking about in this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you next time. <laughs> Bye!
you guys we have reached a hundred thousand subscribers here on youtube i can barely believe it thank you guys so much for subscribing um, i will talk about it a little more in my next video next week um, but yeah thank you for watching today's video this is actually the second learn with me series video um, the first one i did was a few years ago about a five minute practice routine you can click right here to check it out um, but yeah i'm planning to revive this series all about tips and tricks on the violin and learning together so hope to see you next time hope you have a great day